Tanya and I are joined by Alpesh Patel of Profinium Partners. Nice to see you, Alpesh. We'll get your Thank take you. on that. Uh, the fashion we'll get your spandex, EB, we'll get your spandex EB out of it to you a bit later <laughs> on. Already well. wearing. Shame we didn't turn off in one, actually. In just a moment. But first, let's have a look at the front page of The Guardian and uh, the story <coughs> about, it says, doubt surface over nuclear inspectors' tough line on Iran. And this is about... Uh, Yukia Amano, who's the Japanese diplomat who took over the uh, IAEA back in July 2009 and how things have changed under his leadership, the uh, intelligence that they look at, that they put forward and how, you know, the, the story that they're telling about Iran is, is perhaps a little bit too biased. Yes, the accusation is actually of exactly that, of uh, pro-Western bias, uh, and, uh, well, it brings back the memories of the term dodgy dossier. The, essentially, the problem is this. The consequences of unfair action on Iran versus the consequences of inaction, uh, and we end up with a nuclear Iran. I suspect what will end up happening is we will have a nuclear uh, Iran and it will end up being managed a little bit like North Korea has been managed. So I suspect things will be bad, but they won't be as bad as we all fear. Uh, equally, they certainly won't be good in that Iran definitely has no intentions of having nuclear arms at all. And I certainly don't think there'll be a Western invasion because Russia and China would uh, veto it uh, uh, given the experiences after Iraq. I mean, one yes, of the, well, you mentioned Iraq, time. the words dodgy dossier, eh? that's exactly where that comes from and the concern that actually we could be heading into another uh, situation that would be similar to Iraq in the sense that the underlying information, the premise, is wrong. Yes, well remember with Iraq, it was breach of UN resolution, I believe it was 1971, yeah. uh, so there was a breach of an actual UN resolution. Uh, on this occasion, you would have to have the Western powers avoid a veto on a breach of any particular uh, UN resolution and therefore be able to take uh, military action again with the legitimacy of uh, action based on uh, a breach of uh, a UN and resolution. And that wouldn't be available. And I just don't think that's going to happen okay. because this time Russia and China would turn around and say look what you did last time uh, and there wasn't any weapons and so we're not going to give you that, that room. Uh, and we know this because uh, with Syria Russia and China vetoed what they thought might lead three steps down the line to military action so they're not going to let Western powers get even close to uh, invading other countries, let's put it that way. Right, let's look at the Irish Times now and, and their front page, more officials under fire and accused of, of not doing their job in the right way, corruption and abuse of power endemic in politics and this is the findings uh, in a report put through, put forward in a planning tribunal. Just explain what's going on here for those who this may have <coughs> passed them by, this planning tribunal going on in Ireland. Yes, it's an investigation into uh, essentially Irish politics going back over uh, uh, quite a number of years. They've been looking at uh, payments, illegal payments, cash payments, suspected illegal payments, uh, and now this report has come out in terms of what former teachers, former prime ministers of Ireland have been uh, alleged to have done and other senior ranking politicians, particularly in relation to zoning of land. So, as often is the case with with um, uh, corruption allegations in politics, it relates to the sale of assets to the private sector, They've been offered an undervalue, is the idea, in exchange for a backhanded cash payment. I mean, this report is, is damning, <coughs> isn't it? I've um, been looking at some of the key words coming out. Uh, implausible testimony was given, uh, uh, failed to give a truthful account. And we're talking about former prime ministers yes, here. Yes, we're talking Secret about Bertie Ahern, among others, aren't we? What I can't understand with this, I mean, look, the obvious things are it raises cynicism in politics, it keeps good people out, it overshadows the good work that some politicians do, it lets down an entire nation, it means money is not in the national exchequer being used for public works all of those obvious things what I don't understand I, I run asset management company, which is regulated by the FSA we don't go near politicians in terms of having them as clients and I can't understand how banks who obviously received this money on behalf of politicians why the I'm not saying it's the fault of the banks but they are but we're all told if it's a if it's money from a politician the amount of due diligence you've got to do because even the regulators know what tends to happen but cash payments mm. if you go to a bank with more than a couple of hundred pounds you've got to fill in that many forms nowadays mm. I just don't see what the Irish banks were doing and they've obviously had their own problems 
Anyway, so... Well, what's interesting is this is an economy which was described as the Celtic Tiger, and of course the economy at the moment is really in trouble, and this is emerging at that time. And Bertie Ahern presided over that period, didn't he? It was yeah. two, two decades, wasn't it? Absolutely. I mean, we should say that the, uh, the report has been sent to the Director of Public Prosecutions in Ireland, and obviously prosecutions haven't yet been brought, but this is what the report says. It looks like prosecutions are likely to be brought, uh, and it's a lot of money coming into a country uh, in a very short space of time, and presumably, if the allegations are correct, then the temptation just gets too great for the politicians, and it's just too easy to say, I'll give you that for an undervalue if you give me something uh, behind the scenes. Now, let's stay on this theme of, of allegations yeah. and, and those in, in leadership of, of countries not necessarily making the right choices for the right reasons when it comes to handing out contracts. India no. hops on hot coal scam. Uh, Prime Minister <coughs> Mahan Singh, uh, who was in charge of the coal ministry at the time for many years, seemed to be giving out uh, deals to the wrong people at the wrong price. Yeah, it, it's exactly like the Irish one. Uh, the, the problem with the Indians, uh, the Indian story is this comes off the back of telecom asset sales. Yes, the 2G the, 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 allocation yeah, exactly. scam is, is on a roll, isn't it? And the modus operandi is always the same. A minister is uh, allegedly taken, uh, and here we're not talking a few thousand pounds, we're talking quite a lot of money, either in cash or into Swiss bank accounts, in exchange for underselling uh, a national asset like a license. Therefore, again, robbing the people of cash in the exchequer, which could have been in a country like uh, India, unlike a, a relatively wealthy country like Ireland, uh, in a country like India, it has that double impact because you really are uh, causing the poor to suffer. And it was, as you say, the Prime Minister who was in charge of the coal ministry uh, when it basically had him on his so watch. where's this going to lead? Uh, it won't lead anywhere. There won't be a Prime Ministerial re uh, resignation. Uh, I, I say this because I know Indian politics. Uh, uh, it will absolutely lead nowhere. There will be a little bit of uh, greater uh, anti-corruption movement uh, protests in India. Uh, again, the vast majority of people will say, well, we expect this, and this goes on, and uh, they'll put their hands so up. Be yeah. and, and, the the and the economy is No, it'll be very growing. public. In sharp contrast to the Eurozone, uh, let's talk a bit of economics uh, for a moment. Um, manufacturing within the Eurozone, how, should, how far should our concerns spread about uh, these uh, worrying economic I think, I think the American Wall Street Journal is a bit unfair on the Eurozone on this. They've picked one piece of data and said uh, that we're not out of trouble. The purchasing managers... Index it was surprising, for one, you know, though, for both France and Germany. I mean, but, and, and at the time, the euro was falling quite significantly. It was, yeah. it was a bit of a shocker when it came out. But the thing is, you and I know there'll be ten pieces of uh, data out today, and some of them are going to miss their expected uh, targets uh, by more than what's expected. They're going to, they're going to be uh, well below expectations, and that's going to happen today, and it's going to happen on Monday, and it's going to happen every other day. What I find about the interesting about about Europe and, and when you match Europe against the United States they both have the same GDP about 14 trillion dollars Italy is the same size as California California has been on the brink of bankruptcy for about two decades and so you know, mm -hmm. Europe it will survive just as much as the United States will. now very quickly your take Alpesh on Team GB's outfits this is what they'll be sporting not enough red we hear but they'll be pretty red when they start running around won't they so maybe that's <laughs> Not only that, they're going to look so good that they're going to win so many goals. That's I mean, this is, going to, this is going to inspire them. Do you, you know, look they, that good in spandex? That's the other um, I'll tell you later. <laughs> uh, sadly, I, I, I don't. I didn't, make the the I, I, I didn't make the Olympic team this year either. You, the, Astonishingly the, the nation will be glad to hear. <laughs> I think it looks fantastic. I really yeah. do. Well done, Alpesh. Very diplomatically put there at the end of our paper review. Thank you very much indeed for joining us, talking us through the headlines. And thank you too for your company. Stay with us here on BBC News. We'll keep you up to date on all the latest uh, news, business and sport at the top of the hour. See you then.